Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. We have back a returning guest by request, uh, Mr. Derek Johnson. Uh, you all know him well for his service to the U.S. Army as well as in the country music scene, and most imp or equally importantly, uh, the Patriot Movement here in terms of helping uh, explain uh, executive orders and the rule of law and how things are really working on behalf of the betterment of the country and what President Trump is doing and has done to orchestrate that. So uh, we are honored to have you back, uh, Derek. Welcome again to the podcast. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, it's an honor, believe me. Uh, so the two main things I wanted to cover with you, which I know are, there's a lot to discuss inside of that, is um, my understanding from what you shared was with me offline was that you were at Mar-a-Lago with President Trump and a bunch of other illustrious staff uh, over the last couple of days. So um, I would wonder if you might share with the audience a little bit about that experience, what you noticed, what, because uh, you were closer than most of us are to what's actually going on. Uh, if you could share with the audience the significance of that event, what you got out of it, and, and what you gleaned that you think people in the, in the audience need to know from that event, that'd be great. Well, um, first thing, I went down to uh, West Palm to uh, be on an interview with uh, Roseanne. And um, and she she knew my friend Siggy uh, Flicker, um, but uh, Siggy was kind of like, you know, didn't care about interviewing in a different way. She's just kind of like all about the younger generations taking the reins uh, because we're the ones that have to maintain that. And even younger than me and myself, I mean, you know, when you and I get to be old men, we we have to rely on those that are that are onto us to uh, to pick this up, and keep fighting. Uh, you know, I tell people all the time, America is never going to be a hard stop uh, war, hard start or hard stop. I mean, it's always going to be a fight. Um, now, there are times in history where we clean it out. And that's what's going on right now is a clean out. And it's a world clean out, just not not just the U.S. But uh, so that's always important to, re to remember. Um, and then we're in a we're in a movement, but we're also in a great awakening type period where it's it's not only a you know, a regional thing, a national thing. It's an international uh, clean out of the corporation. And, you know, I know a lot of people hear that and they they automatically go to everything this way. Conspiracy theorists that and, oh, you know, that was that was 154 years ago and things of that. But, you know, we are where we are because of history. Um, and And then in 20 and 30 and 40 years, our kids are going to be where they are because of history that we're doing right now. And that's just the way time and, and God planned it. I mean, time only moves forward. It doesn't move backwards. So, um, you know, so it's always important to know that first. So I was down there and uh, interviewing and then Siggy got on and she interviewed uh, for Jetsit. And then uh, so that was Tuesday last week. And then Thursday was a dinner with Siggy at Mar-a-Lago. And um, so when you go in, you go in the the member only portion, which is really cool. It was really, it was really awesome. You know, it's always fun being around President Trump because there's it it just seems like I don't know, it's like here, it's like reading the Bible. Every time you read it, you get something new every time, kind of deal. It's it, you never get well, I guess you can, but uh some people, Siggy. It's the same way like me. Every time I'm around President Trump, I feel that same feeling of like, and that's that's Elvis Presley almost. It's 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 almost like that feeling that people describe being around Elvis, right? It, and you don't want to idol. It's not an idolization. I don't want people to get the wrong impression. It's not an idolization. Um, I don't worship President Trump. I don't worship Elvis. I don't worship them. It's just some people do have that aura about them. And so when we walked in, when we go in the ballet and you ballet and you walk up the steps, you walk right in and President Trump's sitting on the couch with his back to, to us. And it's just that feeling of like, man, you're in a room with, you're in a private room, right? Where only certain people can be, um, especially when he's in a setting like he was setting. He was going over a speech. Uh, there was an event there that that evening, uh, the Tom Homan Border 911 event, which was down uh, not in the dinner portion. It's you just if you've ever been to Mar-a-Lago, you'll it's it's not huge, um, it, it's not small either. Uh, but you know, so he's going over a speech, and 
So that was cool, you know, walking by him and uh, and then watching him do that. And then we go out into the – so it's like a big horseshoe. When when you go out the back door of Mar-a-Lago, it's like a horseshoe walkway. Um, and those all have chairs and things of that nature to the wall. There's a bar uh, to the right, and then there's tables out in the in the horseshoe portion. Um, and his table is – called the rose table it's it's just right to the right when you walk out and it's got a like a um those old velvet or whatever they call those like ropes where it's roped off kind of deal and you know so we sat at the bar at first because the sun was beaming down it's the only place you could get away um and we sat there for a little while and cash patel walked up and uh anybody that's anybody's uh, normally there not always um and then I had an escort for the evening that the Siggy didn't want to walk down into the the event portion, so she had someone that's another member who's a big fan of mine. Um, and shout out to Cameron. Um, he uh, he escorted me down there, and of course Roseanne was down there hanging out at first, and there's a bunch of people down there. I mean, uh, the Epo Times and the, you know different different people were all down there. Uh, so I walked down there just to mingle a little bit and President Trump came out and spoke and then we went back up and he comes out to dinner and uh, there's just a lot of rules that people don't realize at a country club first off. Uh, but then when President Trump is at dinner, there's just certain rules. So you can take pictures a little bit, but I didn't get to take a whole lot. And when he's with dinner, he don't, you know, he's, he's focused on the guests at his table, uh, which is really cool. So if you are that guest, you have undivided attention um and um, of course he's the dj so he plays the music he's got his phone that is a rule if you are a guest he's not ignoring you he's the one sitting there uh controlling what's playing um of course it's everything he plays is stuff that you hear out at the rallies uh, it's just a matter of what sequence he does and then he'll if he's playing like hold on i'm coming um he'll look around to see who's looking he'll you'll see him he'll cut his head and he'll 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 look and then he'll he'll point at you and things like that. And then he'll he'll do his little dance at the table. So he does all that, you know. He's just I tell people, look, you know, where we are. It's April. It's 2024. We're in the final battle year. He's already said that. You know, I'm I'm like his. I guess his. Uh, I'm the guy that that you know you see at the Olympics and they pass the torch, right? I'm the guy. It's like carrying the torch, you know, you get the honor of carrying the torch and you're the guy you, you are too. You're doing the same thing, but painting this picture of the people is that I, everything I talk about is I wouldn't have this book without president Trump. I wouldn't have this book without him because he's the face of the operation. Uh, everything that this book, the first book I wrote is just, yeah, I took thousands and thousands and thousands of pages and condensed it. Uh, but it's still because of him. You know, everything he says, I take it and put it to where, well, that pertains to this law or that order or this operation or that, uh, because it is coded. He has to speak to one side, the people who have no idea what's going on, and then he speaks to people like us, all coded. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the biggest thing that people need to take out of that is the fact that, you know, one, everything he has said was not playing politics. It wasn't a pep rally speech. It wasn't a feel good speech. Everything he has said, the best is yet to come. Uh, you know, we have it all. We've caught them all. I mean, all this stuff wasn't just something for that four years back here and drain the swamp and drain that swamp. That wasn't just feel good stuff. It wasn't just political. It's an operation going on and it wasn't ever going to be a, a hard start and a hard stop. It's, you know, America is fought for every single day. Now, there is a massive clean out going that's going to be a mass clean out. As he said, 75 to 85 percent of street crime will be decimated. I mean, the word decimated means obliteration. And he's also said the word obliteration before, um, which means wiped out, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So when when you're if you're still in that seat and you're paying attention to news or mainstream news, and you're paying attention to these court cases, if you're doing that, you're still on the side that's not seeing the laws, the orders, the, the publications by the military, et cetera, because 
there's so much evidence here that shows that there's a military occupation and an operation going on and also continuously a continuity of operations keeping our essential functions going there's that and if you're i know you can't no no one can always be around him but i'm i'm like that catalyst for you saying look every time i've been around him and everybody else that's around him daily that i know that around him daily he is just like that he's not in panic mode he ain't he's not stressing he's not fretful it's nothing like that his speeches um when he's giving a speech to that side of the Americans that have to hear that, when he talks about the border and the this and the crime and the that, that's to wake you up. That's to make you care about policy. That's to make you care about laws and orders and policies. That's not to make you frantic, to make you fearful. None of that. It's to, it's to make you care about your legislation because now we have to have a government. There's no doubt about it. Now, I do agree. And I'm one of those that feels like a Native American a lot where you just want to sit off to your piece of land in the middle of nowhere and nobody bother you. I get that. However, because population is where it is, we have to have a government that works for everybody. We have to have a system in place. All right. Because of the highways we have, the cities we have, the et cetera, sewage systems and water systems, et cetera. So, but the biggest takeaway is, is, you know, every time I've been around him, he's just, you know, he's just comes in, you know, and, and he's just, you know, so he knows his setting. And I think that's key. And, and what I try to do is get people to say, look, if you want to be on the side where we're cool, calm, collective, we know what's going on, no fear, no panic, no stress, no worries, then you got to read what he put into place. I mean, after all, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one that says all the time, I'm like, man, I mean, you believe in the man, you got to trust the man. Like, I mean, you, you have to trust his plan as well, because his plan is the law and order and legislation. And Joe Biden, for those who think he's real, I'll play devil's advocate. If For those who think he's real, he wouldn't be extending 11 executive orders with national emergencies for nothing. They all have two-year clauses on them, meaning that all he had to do is let them expire. They would have just expired. So why is he extending especially the election interference executive order that makes no sense at all because it was the election of 2020 that was biden and trump it wasn't anybody else so let's say i know what's going on but for you that don't let's just say that that they had this trial somewhere in the future and they're going to go back through and comb over all the evidence of 2020 and fix that now i know they're doing that on everything but let's just for the sake of act like I don't know what I know. And there's this court case. All right. And they pull out all that evidence. And they do, in fact, who's they? We're going to have a bunch of people who are bipartisan. They, just a group of anybody's, who come over that evidence. And they're going to say, wow, there is heavy evidence that shows a lot of fraud. All right. On the Democratic National Convention side. All right. So is Biden going to indict himself too? Is he going to handcuff himself? Because him extending that executive order, that is the executive order. Listen to it, ladies and executive, executive branch, presidential. That's the enforcement law. That, that's what the executive branch does. All right. So why would Joe Biden extend the order that Donald John Trump put into place to enforce the election interference? Why would Joe Biden extend that? If he's extending that, then he would have to indict himself and handcuff himself and nobody else because it wouldn't make any sense. So that's that's the key takeaway for people is that, you know, when I'm when I've been around President Trump, he is just no, no frets, no, no anything. Now, he did come in different kind of uh, fr uh, Friday evening. I went Thursday and then Friday I went back with my friend Cameron and um, he didn't come to dinner. Um, he came in about an hour late and he was wearing his golf shirt and his uh, slacks, um, which is hilarious because I still have a few people who come to my pages or even some of my followers. It's like, that's not really Trump. And I was like, well, I've been around both Trumps now. So how about that? <laughs> you know, so uh, which once again, it doesn't really matter. People get into stuff that really just doesn't matter at all. 
um, you should want to have a, a double anyway, because once again, you know, and when you get to that level in the world, you, you know, you don't, you don't even just have to be part of the swamp to have enemies. You could just have some idiot that's just willing to, you know, make headline news. You don't even have to be a swamp or a cabal. Mm -hmm. um, so he walked in late and he just pointed around the room and there was a soldier in there eating dinner with his family that um, was in full uniform, full dress. Uh, he took one picture. That was it uh, with the soldier and his wife and family. Um, he walked over and talked to an older group of men, kind of in a off under the, it's not a cabana, but it kind of looks like it. Um, and uh, then he got up, walked around, and he walked and looked at me and Cameron and our table, and he just, and then he went up in a room, uh, never came out. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's, uh, that doesn't mean anything bad's going on. It just means that he's very busy. Uh, laws and orders show that he's still sitting president, but acting as commander in chief. That's not my feel good or feelings. You know, I try to tell people that uh, that's all in legislation. And once you learn what a wartime president is, uh, you know, he's still acting in that role. And um, I'm never going to know all the details myself either because I'm I'm not in that need to know there. But I can take everything he puts out um, and then assess it based on you know, what I do know and what I know about it, but he's calm. He's collective. He's smooth. He's not, you know, like I said, he's not fearful at all. And that's what people need to take is, uh, this was going to be a long haul. It's brilliant how they did it. I mean, you really think about if, if we still have to do things, I tell people, we have to do things by the letter of law and we have to do things by the integrity of our foundation and the integrity of that system. Because if you ever, if we or the good guys ever deviated from that, then you'd have the other side either revolting themselves uh, and, and start a war over what? What would they be starting a war over? It wouldn't be a war of anything, but I just don't like the way you think kind of deal. All right. So, you know, when you, when you look at what they did, they, the military, the generals, these higher up world leaders that put this occupation into place um, and that were willing to participate in that. If you gave President Trump eight straight years out the gate, you get the four years and then back to back and you just have eight years. Now, they could still extend powers. Sure. With the presidential emergency action documents that could happen at any time. They could have gotten in that eighth year and go, ooh, da 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 da, -da do that and then extend his power. But it'd be more visual. They didn't want that. They didn't want that. They wanted to do this right and clean out the enemy at one time as much as they could decimation. All right. So you give him four visual, put all the laws and orders in place. Then this year, this fourth year, he put in the law that gave the secretary of defense equal authority, which was amazing. Never been done before. Direct authority for the secretary of defense to be able to federalize the National Guard to act to duty. And they pulled President Trump back. And then they put in the most corrupt criminal in history to be the one that takes all the negativity, the retaliations, et cetera. It falls on that. President Trump pulls back here. He's in control, but all the generals and the military, the Secretary of Defense, et cetera, there's more people here calling the shots as well, right? And then it doesn't fall on him, but it, he deal, he still tells you, I will be exonerated. He don't say acquitted. He says, I will be exonerated. Exoneration, ladies and gentlemen, means everything that fall has, has been blamed on him will be wiped clean because you'll have all this paperwork back here of military laws and orders and also federal laws and orders way back here that accounts for this right here. All this right here will account for that. So when this is presented way down here, all this will be wiped out with that. So it's more brilliant to do four years of President Trump, actions, laws, and orders, pull him back, let the others take control, all right? He's still in a command position, but then put him in visually four more years, you get 12 years to do what you would have had to done in eight. It's just, it's really brilliant, um, you know, the, the minds behind all this, because someone planned this. I'm the one getting to look at what they've already given us, right? 
-hmm. and you and, and people like me and you, but we get the actions if you can understand all of it. But someone set this up to, to you know, all these laws and orders were set up back here by brilliant minds to be able to do it this way and still be ethical and still have integrity behind it. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a great way to kind of summarize it. Um, this is just more of a curiosity thing, Derek, but you know, you've had a chance to meet Trump, President Trump several times over over a period of time and uh, and talk with him, I'm sure, to some brief extent. You hear a lot of discussion uh, in our community about uh, the Trump card. Um, my my question to you would be in this regard is, do you think he's played that card already? And if he has, what do you surmise the main card has or would be? Well, the main card would have been a presidential emergency action document because that's what extends his power legally, lawfully. Um, and um, so, you know, but as far as like, you know, that could be any kind of saying really i mean you could call it you know he could call a trump card anything because he once he extended that power then you know it's just a matter of what strings are being pulled and whatnot now we do know that the i mean his first executive order was very powerful the very first one straight out the gate with the nat well the very first executive order with a national mercy in it which was the human rights abuse you know and in that first paragraph it's got the global manitsky accountability act well that's for a russian person so why would Biden extend that order as well when it's it's got a Russian asset in there? Um, and uh, so, you know, all the all the what people are calling Trump cards, you know, that's a term kind of like love or, you know, something of that nature where it got kind of, you know, pushed a little further than probably what it should have. But, uh, you know, I mean, when people want to argue or debate, you know, if you're someone out there that's still struggling with a family member or friend or colleague or or whatever, um, and even some podcasters still experience it, uh, where someone's being combative and they say, oh, well, you know, the Constitution says that Congress is the only one who can declare the war. Well, that's the Constitution as it was written. That's just the the, the original Constitution. The Constitution was written to be amended along the way, and it has been. Um, and so we're, where are we at right now? The constitution as it sits, the, uh, war powers act of 1973 gives the full, that gives the president full declaration to declare war, uh, without Congress. All he has to do is tell them within 48 hours that I'm sending the troops here or they're going there and they're going to do this. Um, so you don't have to like that. Like I tell people, but that's what it says as it sits right now. So if you don't like it, that's ever more reason for you to learn the language and learn the laws and the orders. And then you got to realize it's going to take two thirds of Congress to change that or two thirds of the states to change that. And that's going to take a lot of people not liking it in order for that portion to happen. So I think the Trump card ultimately was for the people. And I still think the Trump card was for the people who didn't know the laws and orders either. And uh, from the standpoint of this, the arguments that people have at barbecues and 4th of July's and wherever, or just not even for that. When people say the president can't declare war, yes, he can. Here's where you don't have to like it once again, but then the president can expand his power via presidential emergency action documents. They nickname them as PEDs. Um, and that's the very thing they're, they're basically a PED is it's, it's draft classified. So no one can know what's in it. But there's a way to prove that a P was signed with President Trump because of all the other stuff around it. But basically what a P is, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't you haven't Googled it yet, but it's they they take executive orders and all kinds of other documents of of you know that would be classified for a president to sign all at once. It's already pre pre prepared. And if he gets in a situation where you don't know you're about to be hit by a nuclear bomb or something crazy, and he has to do all these declarations to get the military activated just like that, then these documents were pre-prepared. All he has to do is just sign them. Because that is, once again, his what? His evidence that it wasn't a abuse of power. This was pre-prepared by DOJ and then also military. So it, it that's his exoneration packet, basically, going... I had to do this. We're putting it right here. 
and it'll be documented and then it'll be exposed later. So there's no way we're going to see that right now because it's still ongoing. Uh, there's still signs that shows this is ongoing, meaning the subterranean warfare. That's the war that's going on right now, subterranean warfare. Um, and that's all documented. Um, so I think that was the Trump car because that would have been something that if people were paying attention to the cannons that day on January the 20th, that that was not a transfer of power, ladies and gentlemen. So if you saw that and knew that, then you would have known that, okay, uh, or I say you would have known, you could have researched even that, how does a president expand his power, extend his power? Then you could see that. All right. So that would have been a, a major trump card to do that, um, to extend his power out, um, which would have make it, by definition, that makes him a wartime president. Uh, but then also you have to have all those other things that back it. The War Powers Act, his declaration in there, uh, Section 1550 was not there until Donald Trump put it there. Um, so it's kind of like Bush, you know, as we call him W, uh, George Jr. Um, the same declaration to go to Iraq is in the War Powers Act. Um, so if people can believe that and see that, even though you can't see this war, it's a subterranean warfare, meaning the sewers and the tunnels, the, the same kind of declaration is in the War Powers Act. By president trump that's what would have ultimately made him a wartime president by definition so mm. great thank you for that thank you for that clarification and explanation you know it's interesting that you would bring up Derek uh, iraq because a lot lot going on over there right now with the dinar and with sudani coming to dc you know and the ending of ramadan and eid and we just got some information today that was pretty compelling and confirming that you probably already know which is that uh you know the whole thing is a script right you know that's all it's like a playbook, you know, we know that on the, on the inside, like you said, and I think many of the followers are, are, you know, putting that together for themselves in different, you know, stages. But that all being said, it's interesting because Israel has now come out and said the next time that Iran attacks, which we know they're waiting for the end of Eid Ramadan this week, uh, which, you know, it could be a week, it could be two weeks, but we know it's coming, that Israel is adamant that they're going to hit the secret nuclear power plants of Iran which is going to make the world think that's World War III, but in actuality for God's people and for the whole of this, this you know, financial community and for geopolitical for that matter is really a, a, a huge blessing, right? Because that frees up the dinar, frees up Iraq. It also gets Iraq away from the U.S. deep state factions uh, that you had to deal with in, in your past and probably present. And then also frees them up from the Iranian proxy government that's illegally installed over there, just like what we got going on over here. So uh, just interesting you should bring that up. I wonder if you have any thoughts about that. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, that's it all. And then it all ties in from this angle. I was just telling, we were just talking about that this week. Um, and, and then Siggy, Siggy was born in a bomb shelter in Israel during the Six Day War, which is really cool about her story. Um, so, and we're not talking about that long ago, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's the key thing for me is that we're not talking about history that's like thousands of years old. Now, it it is. It ties in, but you know we're talking about recent history. The gold standard we left it in '68. That wasn't that long ago, um, you know. So, and that was after the Six Day War. Ironically, see, that was I mean a year after it. Well, really not even a full year because the Six Day War was in June. Um, so, but where it all ties in, and and where people are, are still struggling in a different manner is the fact that well, one, you got to read a lot of stuff. You got to multitask a lot of information, uh, but the the Israel portion, all right. You have to go to the Hebrew origin. You know, I tell people all the time, and I I, I can I feel like I can pick on it more because I'm from the South. You know, in the South is the Bible Belt, and it's the the heavy heavy Christians, and you know, and I'm not I'm not just trying to pick on you and driving the ground in the wrong way, but I'm just saying if you call yourself a Christian, you got to go to Christ's origin. Uh, it's Hebrew. It, it ain't Alabama, Mississippi, Texas. <laughs> you know, you got to go to the origin of Christ. All right. And why that matters and why this all ties in is because Israel, God's chosen country. All right. The Bible says any nation against Israel will be damned, will be smited. All right. That's a that's a lot. That's once that's that's words for obliteration and decimation again. Um, and so the reason why that's key is because we've seen what's been going on. In Israel, so on Yom Kippur, it was the anniversary of Yom Kippur, 
which is the 50th anniversary. And in Hebrew, 50 years equals a jubilee. All right. And a lot of jubilees in, in biblical times are, are good things for Jewish culture, Jewish people, Christ people. All right. Um, and then Yom Kippur. So October 7th, 2023 is when they said that there was a music festival, you know, attacked kind of deal. Well, in one week's time, one week, and it's going to, the Siggy loves when I rattle these off, but I'm, I'm going to miss a few, I'm sure. But I mean, you'll get the point. But um, in one week now, if this was just Hamas versus Israel, which, you know, if you were talking to someone who doesn't keep up with current events, et cetera, they'd say, oh, there's always fighting in the Middle East. That's your typical standard, you know, comment. Oh, they always fight over there. All right. Okay. Well, that's someone who ain't paying attention. But in one week's time, ladies and gentlemen, one week from that date, October the 14th, in one week, all these countries were in Israel. So Romania, Bulgaria, Sweden, Switzerland, Argentina, Colombia, Tunisia, Algeria, Nigeria, Australia, Mexico, Canada, uh, New Zealand, uh, Germany, United Arab Emirates. Uh, I can't even name them all, like I said, Russia. What's Russia doing in Israel, ladies and gentlemen? If Russia's the bad guy, what's Russia doing in a humanitarian big, big aircraft? What are they doing in Israel? All those countries, Thailand, Japan, I mean, I can keep my Netherlands, Belgium, the United Kingdom. Uh, I'll think of them all eventually. But, you know, all those nations were in Israel in one week's time. And then just right before that, Kamala Harris, supposedly supposed to be the vice president of the United States, supposedly, right? Now, I know, and he knows, but we know it's all an act. It's a, what they call a continuity of operation. But, all right, Kamala's saying there's no U.S. troops going to be in Israel. Well, what are they doing there? I got them on a flight radar. You don't just have to be boots on the ground to be in Israel. An aircraft in Israel is United States troops. What's the United States aircraft doing in and out of Israel before and after that article? Uh, then, then the other articles. This is why... Ladies and gentlemen, once you learn the laws and the orders, then you'll be able to look at what they're doing and you'll be able to look at the articles that are coming out and see that they're trying to wake up people. Because just this past week, last week, the article said that, that Biden and Kamala said severe consequences to Netanyahu and Israel if they invade Rafa. All right. They attack Rafa. Well, then Netanyahu saying, well, why is Biden sending us uh, 1,800 2,000 pound bombs? I mean, that's that's like saying, then this is harsh to, to say. This is really harsh example. But it's kind of like someone telling you they're going to hurt themselves, like, for example, suicide, and you handed them a pistol. Why would you do that? I mean, that. so here's Biden saying that Israel's going to face severe consequences if they attack Rafa, but he's in the same week sending 1,800, 2,000 pound bombs. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, it just, it, you can't get any more clear than that. So, but then what's, you take that, all the current, put it right here. I like to do my hands as example. Put that here, hold on to it, don't lose it. But let me show you where this has already been predicted. Army. I love Marine Corps. I love Air Force, Space Force, uh, Navy. I love all, all of them. You know, my Army. I was Army. I got a gift shout out to my Army, right? The Army publications, 2019. In 2019, all right, these publications were written. Now, before 2017, we had what you call tunnel rats in the, in the military. And it was like a group, kind of like Special Forces. It wasn't a lot of them, it was a small little group. And they did these tunnels in the 70s. All right. And but there wasn't any publications. There was no set subterranean warfare publications, strategies, and things of that nature until who? Donald John Trump 2017. All right. Donald John Trump is the one who said, all right, let's start implementing that. Let's start training for that. Let's put that into our training. And the military started writing these publications for subterranean warfare. That's 2017. 2018 and 2019, articles came out, and you probably wouldn't have known it. That's fine because it's mainly military people, military.com, militarytimes.com. 
you know, a lot of independent things for military started talking about. It said this, June 24, 2018, there's an article you can still Google on military.com. It says the Army is spending a half a billion dollars for our wars. Our next wars will be inside mega cities, not in them, though, but beneath them. All right. That's subterranean warfare. That was 2018. In 2019, DARPA, an, an organization that is also part of the uh, Quantum Initiative Act, uh, DARPA put out an article that said that they were requesting immediate access from universities for their tunnels. I mean, every parent out there that has a daughter, especially, but even a son, but even but especially a daughter, should go, wait, there's tunnels on the universities in the United States of America? Yes, I've been in one of them. All right. So I, I can I can definitely say I've been in one of those. All right. So that alone, they're telling you, they're already forecasting for you. But what makes it even better is even though those are independent and I stay away from independent as much as possible until I have dot mil or dot gov, the army dot mil publication in it, it's 2019. And it specifically says Hamas colon Gaza uh, Egypt cross border operations. And inside that article in 2019 on dot mil, it says the army spent $572 million. Isn't that a half a billion? So see how they align. All right. Donald Trump always says one thing we are not paying for it anymore. We, as in American people, taxpayers, et cetera, our government, we're not going to pay for your wars. We're not going to pay for anything anymore. That's that's over said and done. He said, we're going to terminate defense contracts and lobbyists. We're not going to have defense contracts anymore. No lobbying. <laughs> that's going to wipe out. Lobbyists alone wipes out all of D.C. If you, I mean, you really think about that. Anybody who knows what lobbyists is or, you know, what, what they do and what they are. All right. But then he said, we're not paying for it anymore. So what are the odds, ladies and gentlemen? I have the backup. Here's your army publications, all right, of the future war coming where we are right now, way back here in 2019. Canadian manuals, I have the Canadian army manuals that align with that. And they also say we align with whom? Israel and the United States, all right? And that 500 million. Then you go to 2019, there's an article that's put out in the state of Oklahoma, the great state, the rep real Republican state, right? There was a court case with Johnson and Johnson who went after opioids and the pharmaceuticals more than anybody, Donald John Trump and his executive orders proved that and his war on trafficking proved that. All right. So here's an article and it's in the same month that they're also putting out that the army is going to be going to tunnels and sewers, et cetera, subterranean warfare. All right. $500 million training in this article, right? is about Johnson & Johnson losing the case. And guess how much money they pay? $572 million. Now, what are the odds that that has to do with pharmaceuticals and also opioids, all right? And what are the odds that these army manuals also say $572 million, which is subterranean warfare, which is cleaning out what? Trafficking, all right, which is paid by what? Drug trafficking, opioids, fentanyl, et cetera. So, you know, it's all been predicted way back here, ladies and gentlemen. So, unfortunately, because it festered to the way it did in every facet that we have, music industry too, everywhere has festered to a point. It wasn't going to change overnight, and it couldn't change overnight, no matter if we wanted it to change overnight. And when we say overnight, we're even talking about a year, two years, three years, four years. This is a massive clean out. And uh, you just got to hang on tight because, you know, as long as those orders are extended and they're, they're in place, um, you know, it's still ongoing. Um, and the federal continuity directives show that the, the continuity of operations was going to go to 2024. It's in the federal register. It says 2018 to 2022, the first one. And the second one was 2020 to 2024. So it showed you it was going to be, uh, you know, a long operation from the get go. Um, but, you know, what ends up happening is people, and you know this, it's just like anything else. When you're going through a trial in life, it feels like forever while you're going through it. You get through it. You you went through it so fast, you don't spend the same equal time praising the the, the moment of 
you know, glory or uh, try whatever it is, triumph, whatever you went through. You don't spend the same equal time triumphing. You're like, oh, well, finally done with that. Let's move on. <laughs> no. So that's what people are going to be doing with this in, in one way. But what we're trying to say is like, look, when we get through all this clean out, it ain't going to just be a hard stop. We got to maintain that and, and prevent it from getting there again. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to identify uh, be able to identify what accountability looks like, what responsibility looks like, what transparency looks like, what responsibility looks like, honesty, integrity, et cetera. Uh, and then facilities and systems. You have to be able to see like President Trump as the apprentice who's not getting the job done. He didn't care if he, you were, if you're my buddy, you became my buddy and I wasn't doing something based on your standard of your operation. Hey, nothing against you as a buddy, but you're not getting the job done. You're, re you're relieved. You're fired, right? You have to be that. And that's what makes the world go around or, or tough people who know how to make tough decisions uh, in any situ situation, circumstance, et cetera. Um, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Very well. Very well put as usual. Um, and then the financial system. I mean, yeah. So that yeah. portion is, is the clean out. I mean, when people think about the U.S. dollar, I mean. The U.S. dollar is being used everywhere. Well, guess what the dollar has on it? A number. <laughs> what yeah. What is our money doing way over there? Not being brought back. It'd be different if it's bringing brought back. It wasn't being brought back. They just kept printing more money, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Right? Wars. Who's that hurting? Why Why is a Dodge Ram worth sixty thousand dollars? <laughs> you know, not knocking Mopar, but my God, I mean, think. So everything just kept going up, and we're not counting for it, not bringing it back. And then other nations, you know, that are doing what they're supposed to be doing as the civilians of those nations, same thing. They're, theirs kept going and, and, you know, either it just got chaotic and people got to realize that the dollar is just a, it's a, it's a, it ain't a dollar, but basically if it was, it's just got a number. That number is control. It's control, right? If you don't account for that control and bring that back and they just keep printing, then it comes what out of control. Yeah. I mean, so. And it's a dead instrument at the end of the day, as you well know. And, uh, you know, the BRICS has made it stand globally that they're going against the dollar. And, you know, it's funny, Derek, we're both patriots in different ways, but I never thought I'd be, you know, we've talked about this before, but I'll, we'll lend it on this note. But, you know, I ne never thought that we'd be rooting for some of our uh what the media calls our advers our out our adversaries are actually our allies like russia and a lot of these countries that basically are, are working to help remove not only the dollar from their country but ours as well thereby forcing the gold standard so it's it's it would seem it's coming full circle well the gold back digital currency was announced in zimbabwe um, yep. Yep. You know, and um right. the rupee the rupee has been going i mean everything is is and it takes time, ladies and gentlemen, once again, because even yeah. their systems, even though they're not as big as ours, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, everything has a facet and avenue um, and how they're going to implement the new, you know, and they're what they're doing. I mean, it takes time yeah. um, and you got to get it right. You know, it's not you don't it, this wasn't something that they just they edged out in and were like, it might work. No, it was a well-oiled plan before they ever got there. And when it was go time, it was go time. There wasn't any turning back. Uh, but this is this is a well-oiled machine everywhere. Um, and it was going to take time in every nation. So and that's why President Trump says America first. He didn't mean America and nobody else. He just said, look, every country is going to be doing this for their nations, et cetera. Then when we get through all that, then we'll get back to international trade and what do you need versus what do we need? And but it won't be any more, you know, uh, not reciprocal. That's why he always talks about reciprocal trade. Mm -hmm. You know, reciprocal. Everything's gonna be reciprocal. If you put yeah, a three hundred percent tariff on us, we're gonna put a three hundred percent tariff on you. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, absolutely. No more Ponzi scheme. Something real for something real. Balance where it's exactly. fair, like you said, as you know, back in twenty seventeen. Great. Well, as always, uh, Derek, we love having you on. Look forward to having you on again soon. Um, last uh, thoughts you have for the audience today and where can people find your book? Well, I'll just tell people to hang in there. You know, it's, uh, you, you know, if you have the heart of a warrior, then it takes patience. Um, and and the, the same army manual I was just talking about, 
has a pie chart in the bottom of it. And it says, and this is for the Army side, so you got to think of what they're talking about. So over here it says cognitive patience. So if you if the Army has to have cognitive patience, that means they're dealing with cognitive dissonance. All right. So very key. So I tell people if you are awake and you're following, then be patient. Trust, trust the plan, trust the man, and uh just and believe that, you know, the man has a lot of people around him. A lot of people, world leaders. Um, and uh so just hang tight. If if you're 40 and you live to be 90, you're gonna live through it. So however old you are, if you get to live to be old, you're gonna live through it. So you're gonna live through history. I'd rather go through history with a smile and saying, I was a trooper, I was a warrior, versus knowing that I was one of those negative Nancy's, but then turn around and act like, you know, I was uh, you know, little David defeating Goliath over here later. You know, and you'll know that. So I say be positive right now, all the way through it. Uh, the book, uh, you can get it on rattletrap1776.com, which goes over to my Shopify if you want it signed by me um, and cheaper. But I don't have the option with international shipping that way through me. Um, so if you want international shipping or if you want it way quicker, uh, then you can get on Amazon. It's on Amazon Kindle, and it's also printable. So it's a print back there as well. So um, it just depends on. Um, you know, depends on what you want, how quick you want it, and if you want me to sign it or not. So um, it's called The Midnight Rider Rides Again. So, yeah. Great. We will definitely put that link in the description. And again, folks, uh, please do remember we have Club Patriot, which is also an international sort of a coalition. It's not just bound by the states here. If you want to get with other like-minded patriots, there is the uh, free side of that in Club Patriot. We can network, come up with creative solutions, uh, just help each other out. Uh, you'll probably find that there's a lot of people in your local area that you didn't realize were right in your surrounding neighborhood and uh, you can galvanize. And then if you're looking to do business deals, if you're trying to create streams of income or you want to network with other business owners, collaborations, partnerships, what have you, that's the Real World Academy. And you can find that link in the description. Derek, thanks for your time. We look forward to having you back again soon. We really appreciate your support and thank you for everything you're doing for the Patriots and the community of America. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me again, and uh, it's my honor to do so. We'll see you soon. All right, God bless.